and let us all that we can to build a better future. So let's talk about the city of Chicago. I know. Why are we talking about Chicago? Because city officials, uh, the city council, create a resolution in support of Israel. And there were some people in the gallery that decided to voice out a counter opinion. So I want to give a huge shout out to this wonderful person who managed to at least capture this video. I don't think it's the same person who's narrating it, but they did tweet it out. Thank you, Monica, Black Bernie Babe. Uh, and I want to pull up this video here and let's hear it out. It's two minutes and 20 seconds of pure gold. Let's listen. Before I go to bed, I really have to share this. Today in Chicago, there was a special city council meeting where they talked about what's happening in Israel and as well as Gaza. During this meeting, they condemned Hamas. They prayed for the safe return of the hostages and they showed support for Israel. What they failed to do was talk about anything happening to the Palestinians in Gaza. And during this meeting, there was someone who spoke and you have to hear what he said. Our next speaker is Gabriel Miller. I would, I, I would like to add my voice to the chorus here today in opposition to this ridiculous resolution at a time when the rest of the world is condemning Israel for committing war crime after war crime. Chicago is fiddling around on whether to condemn Hamas. By doing so, Chicago will be doing its part in enabling the genocide of Palestinians. And this resolution acts like it's on the side of innocent civilians. So in that case, I'd like to add, are you considering a resolution condemning Israel for what, using white phosphorus against the civilian population? Are you considering condemning Israel for its planned war crime of forced removal of one million Palestinians from northern Gaza? Are you going to condemn them for cutting off food, water, and electricity to Gaza, another war crime called collective punishment? Did it ever cross your mind to condemn Israel when they assassinated Palestinian journalist Shireen Abu Akleh in broad daylight, or when they brutalized the people carrying her coffin peacefully, or when Israeli snipers killed innocent peaceful protesters throughout the March of Return? Did the people in office before you ever consider condemning Israel at any point since its inception would it cram a country full of people into a 60 mile corner of their own country, creating the largest concentration camp in history, the largest open air prison in the world? The answer is a resounding no. You never considered it, nor did your ancestors. But unfortunately for you, times have changed. The world is increasingly aware of the crimes of Israel and increasingly aware of the framework of politicians who enable their continued apartheid by resolutions such as these. And in a city like Chicago, with majority black and brown people who have experienced the apartheid-like conditions of oppression in the United States, a generation of young people have emerged who understand immediately that we have everything in common with the Palestinian people and nothing in common with the brutal Zionists under who they suffer. A generation of people who are not surprised when we find out that our politicians up to our president spread lies about 40 babies being beheaded in order to rationalize genocide. We're only surprised that they're. And that what you call my friends is getting dragged. All I have to say is to the city council and to this, uh, Brandon Johnson administration, which is, uh, a click copy paste version of Lightfoot. I'm sorry. It's just the Brandon Johnson administration is weak, it's pathetic, it's uninspiring, and in that delicious two minutes and 20 seconds, that jagoff and the city the city, the city, city council members filled with a bunch of jagoffs, the mayor, who's a jagoff, got one big... Oof. 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 And that, my friends, is what you call getting dragged, but there's more to this story. There's a little bit more, and I think it's important that we see firsthand what exactly is happening here? And again, I want to give, give a huge shout out to a lot of my viewing audience members that uh, brought that to my attention. I think we all have to uh, keep on sharing it and speaking out about it. I want to pull up this article here from Block Club Chicago. Uh, so again, uh, this was uh, this happened on the 14th. This article is written. Uh, City Hall, City Council approved a controversial resolution to condemn Hamas' attack on Israel in a verbal vote at the end of a raunchous meeting Friday. Attendees repeatedly cheered, booed, and chanted while public commentators and aldermen spoke about the Israel-Hamas war. Mayor Brandon Von Johnson eventually ordered the council chamber cleared as members of the public chanted in protest. Oh, Brandon Johnson. Weak. I'll give my thoughts on the Chicago mayoral election of last year. I'll save it for another day and what I really wanted to see happen. But anyways, one can dream. One can dream. 
but I guess that's all it is. It's just a dream. It's important to note that the article, uh, or at least the resolution, it contained limited mention of the deaths of Palestinians killed by Israeli strikes in Gaza. It also does not describe the brutality of Israel's retaliation against Gaza, which has included the use of dangerous chemicals, uh, including uh, to Human Rights Watch, forced evacuations of over 1 million Palestinians, and cuts off cutoffs uh, from elect electricity, fuel, food, water, and medical supplies, according to the United Nations. More than 1,300 people have been killed in, in Israel since the Hamas attack on October 7th, according to media reports. According to Saturday, update by the Gaza Ministry of Health, at least 2,215 people in Gaza have been killed by Israeli airstrikes. We will not see peace in our time. Silverstein, who is the only Jewish elder person, addressed the council after 30 minutes uh, of heated public uh, comment. Re uh, referencing the Holocaust, she said Jews did not do anything to invite violence and that the hate is a sickness and that uh, continues to grow. She emphasized her resolution specifically focused on Hamas, not Palestine as a whole. This resolution is not about Israel and Palestine, Silverstein said. It is not it is not about one military against another. It is about Israel versus Hamas, a democratic nation versus an internationally organized terrorist organization. As she spoke, chants among the crowd escalated. We don't have a military. We're under occupation. What about Gaza? And look, there was a comparison of Chicago. To Gaza. And let, let me let me just explain about Chicago's history, okay? Anytime you listen to Fox News or any other really right wing media organization, and you say Chicago is a socialist communist utopia, it isn't. No, no, it's not. It's a corporatist utopia belonging to the top one percent. If you got the money, you're okay. Anyone that says this is a socialist lance, no, it's not. No, it's not. See, Chicago is a city that is built internally around corruption. There's a reason why the Democratic machine, it's not really mentioned much by the Democratic Party because the Democratic machine is a well-oiled machine that is designed for one thing, the continuation of power and profits and keeping people in power and making sure everyone else is repressed and silenced. Go ahead, ask Jimmy Dore about Chicago politics. He'll tell you. I'll tell you all about Chicago politics, what my family had to go through and what every other family has to go through in regards to Chicago. This city is hyper segregated, not segregated. No, no, no. it's hyper segregated. It is planned that way from the beginning. There's the north side and the south side. And let me tell you something, especially for Chicago's on the south and west side neighborhoods, people are being displaced. People are neighborhoods are being gentrified. Families that have been living in their neighborhoods for generations are being kicked out. Owning a home is a dream. There's a mass migration of many people leaving the city because it's becoming that expensive. There's lead in our drinking water, for Christ's sakes. But also we have not only do we have gentrification, but we also have large industry and polluters moving into neighborhoods. Polluting the environments. There's industrial facilities next to schools or public parks. And I've talked about it numerous times on Hardlands Media. And it's causing people to be displaced. Schools being shut down. And for those who don't know, when a school is shut down, especially in the south and west side neighborhoods in Chicago, that's a death blow. It's a killing strike. And a very insidious killing strike on top of that. Organizers, supporters for, of Jewish Voice uh, for Palestine, likewise said they hoped the council would vote against the resolution. Since the United States provides so much financial support to Israel, they said they felt it was important for Chicagoans to protest Israel's treatment of Palestinians. The U.S. are not a neutral party, said Nisha Bolzli, a uh, Jewish Voice for uh, Palestine supporter. We send billions of dollars to Israel every year, specifically for their military. Several people giving public comments spoke about the pain they felt condemning the Hamas attacks, the Israeli occupation uh, uh, of Palestine, or both. <clears throat> a few minutes later, another commentator took a very different stance. I'd like to, and this is the gentleman who was playing in the video. I'd like to ask, are you considering a resolution condemning Israel for using white phosphorus against the civilian population? Are you considering condemning Israel for its planned war crime of forced removal of one million Palestinians from northern Gaza? Mm. And that was nothing. No, no, nobody, nobody said anything. Not from this administration, not this mayor. You see, unfortunately, 
asking any kind of accountability from our Chicago politics. It's um, it's never going to happen. But I do have a special treat for all of you because I think it's only fair. I think it's only fair that you at least get to hear the part two of the video. Because after all, we here at Hard Lens Media believe in delivering the entire story. Because you heard part one. So let's pull up part two. Did the people in office before you ever consider condemning Israel since its inception would it cram a country full of people into a 60 mile corner of their own country, creating the largest concentration camp in history, the largest open air prison in the world? The answer is a resounding no. You never considered it, nor did your ancestors. But unfortunately for you, times have changed. The world is increasingly aware of the crimes of Israel and increasingly aware of the framework of politicians who enable their continued apartheid by resolutions such as these. And in a city like Chicago, with majority black and brown people who have experienced the apartheid-like conditions of oppression in the United States, a generation of young people have emerged who understand immediately that we have everything in common with the Palestinian people and nothing in common with the brutal Zionists under who they suffer. A generation of people who are not surprised when we find out that our politicians up to our president spread lies about 40 babies being beheaded in order to rationalize genocide. We're only surprised that they're forced to walk those lies back. But of course, the damage is done. People are still spewing the debunked lies about rape and massacre of babies, even here in this very meeting. When actually there is endless evidence of Israel having killed over 500 babies in the last 48 hours alone, having dropped more bombs in 24 hours than the U.S. dropped on Afghanistan in one year. And finally, let it be known that condemning the attack as the actions of some fringe group misses the point of what's going on. The attacks were carried out by a broad coalition of groups from every section of Palestinian society, not just Hamas. That coalition represents a people determined to attain freedom at any cost. And they have arrived at this point in the face of a broad coalition of right-wing Zionists and their supporters like those in the city council who would start a meeting with a prayer calling for their attempt at freedom, a second Holocaust where I'm so silent you could hear a rat piss on cotton when innocent, peaceful Palestinians are annihilated day in and day out like the Native Americans of this country. If it were another time, these same people would be condemning Africans for rebelling against their slave masters and slavery, such as Nat Turner or in the Haitian Revolution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Thank you. And there's our pathetic mayor trying to bring an order, which he cannot. So what can we take away from this? First of all, uh, that gentleman who was speaking sure was cooking. That's what you call giving a voice to the voiceless and uh, bringing the fire into the Chicago City Council. Um. Chicago's got a lot of problems, especially with our politicians. And more importantly, I think it's in, I think it's inherently our social responsibility for all Chicagoans to call out our local leaders, to challenge them, because they're not representing us. I had a lot of hope for the 2019 election. I truly did. And I did want it to play out a certain way, but who knows? One can hope for the next city election. Maybe that one will be different. Perhaps. Perhaps it will. Who's to say? But the one thing that's very true is that you cannot silence a Chicago voice because they will be making their voices heard loud and far. That's why we here at Hard Lens Media salute the actions of the people in the gallery calling out these jagoff lawmakers because, let's face it, they're in their bubble, and it's a long time that we pop it simple as that 